Welcome. In this video today, we're going to talk about working with slices in Reason 8.3. I have imported a little track here uh, to use as an example for when we're working with slices. Um, now, to let's just jump into this to work with slices. Whenever you have an audio clip here, you're just going to double click on that. And then, as you can see here, it kind of looks a bit crazy, but that's because we're not zoomed out and um, there's a ton of slice markers going on here. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So I'm going to hit escape and come back out just to show that you can also double click and do the same thing. So double clicking or pressing enter on a selected track will get you into the inline editor where you can then begin to work with um, these slices. One thing to take note of is that the audio clip does have to be a single take audio clip. If you've done some comping, then you can't uh, do bring up the inline editing. So I'm going to control and drag to create a duplicate copy of this. And what I'll do is Take note of this area here that it's blank now. I'm going to right click and reverse that. Now what Reason will do is create a duplicate of the original audio clip and reverse that duplicate. So I'm going to double click there and you can still access the slice the slices here, but I'm going to go into the comp editor, and you can see that the original file is here and it's been grayed out, and this is the reversed file. And this button is selected, so we're in single take mode, and that's the only reason why we can double click on that and still get to edit the slices. If I were to do some comping on this, I'll deselect that, bring up the razor tool, and say select that there. And so now we're using two different parts, one from the reversed audio, one from the original. I'll escape out of here. You can see there are several dots here. If you see these several dots, then you know that it's a clip that has some comping going on. And if I go back to the selection tool by hitting Q, I'll double click. And see, we don't get the inline editor, we get the comp editor. So I'm going to click this and choose uh, go back into the single take mode. And don't worry, I'm, I'm going to do a whole video on the comp editor, but I just wanted to show you if you're having any issues, this could be part of the problem. But choosing that will bring you back to single take mode. I'll escape out of the editor, the comp editor there. And then when we double click, we again are able to get to the slices. Now, um, since I did switch this back to the single take mode, you now just have two parallel bars. And, and whereas the clip that I copied does not have those. This just lets you know that you are, this is, this audio clip is in single take mode, but there is an additional audio clip or additional audio clips or recordings within this one. So if I double click and open and comp edit, see we still have that grayed out one, the original file. But since we're in single take mode, it's, it's not active. And that's why you have the parallel bars. The several dots will mean that you have several takes that are active. And you won't be able to edit the slices. So I'm going to delete that one that I created. And I'll just go back up here. So let's get to the slices. I'll double click. And let's just zoom out. I'm going to go ahead and play a bit of this file just so you have an idea of what we're working with.
okay, I think you should have a good idea of what we're working with now. And one other thing that I want to mention, if you are having any uh, issues opening up a single tape clip, uh, be sure that you see disable stretch. Uh, now I just click disable. If I right click again, there's enable stretch. So enable stretching is on by default, but if you're ever having problems opening up uh, the audio clip in line, be sure that you have enable stre uh, stretch selected. So I'm going to zoom out here. And so in between these lines here are the slices. The actual lines themselves are the slice markers. And up above these triangles are the slice handles. Now you can move these when you're editing these uh, markers what you're doing is stretching the audio without altering the pitch so if I drag here that's one way that you can move and, and adjust that audio information you can gr grab the handle as well I'm going to control Z to get that back to as it was. And for some reason, it's going into the comp editor. There we go. I just control Z again. Um, So let's take this first part here and adjust that audio to give an idea of how this works. Okay, say I want to lengthen that. First, I'm going to really need to get rid of um, some of these markers in here. So you can select by the handle or you can select uh, by the slice marker. I'm going to hold down shift and select and you can see all of these are selected. I'm just going to simply hit the delete button. Okay. So now we've got all of this audio in between these two markers and I'm going to drag this and actually you can't because you can only drag these so far if you've got other markers you can't drag beyond those. So what I will need to do is delete that one, select that, and delete. I can then move out there we go. Move that out. Now you will be able to play this back initially, but So you can see how the pitch has been kept the same, but the audio has been lengthened. But if you take note down in the corner here, you'll see the calc. Reason is performing a render in the background of that audio that was altered. It's a higher quality one. What they do is give you something that's going to work in real time, so you can have a general idea of how it's going to sound once this has finished moving all the way around then you will have a higher quality um, audio for that segment that you've adjusted okay so now you can kind of see that that jump there my computer is a bit slow yours probably wouldn't take that long to do that calculation I'll go ahead and play that again and see how that sounds Okay, and let's go back to that original, how it originally was. Okay, and see, there's a little bit of artifacts in there, and it looks like it's recalculating to get it back to how it originally was. 
So that's why you had those artifacts. When you are uh, stretching audio in here, you do want to be sure that in this area here, you choose the right option. So I have all round selected right now, and that's good for what we're doing. Um, actually, we were just working with a vocal there, so I should have chosen vocal. And then the quality, that would improve the quality of it. Um, if you are working with uh, a polyphonic sound, then you want to use all round. For monophonic, you want to choose melody. And so for what we were just doing, I should have chosen vocal, actually. So that was my error. OK, uh, also, one other thing to mention, I'm going to zoom out a bit with the H key. You can uh, use the speaker tool to audition these slices. So if you hold down Alt, you can bring that up. You can, you know, uh, hit I on your keyboard or select up here and bring up the tool. But I'm going to hit Q and bring back the select selection tool. And, you know, if you just hold down Alt, you can then sample these. And where those crosshairs are is where you're going to be playing. So if you're trying to uh, audition a very small slice, just make sure that the crosshairs are in that area. Okay, one other thing to mention is that the pencil tool I'll hit W to bring up the pencil tool that will add new slice hand, or slice slices within here. I'll bring back the selection tool and you can just select And delete. You can also, if you want to delete a group, just select the first one, hold down shift, select another one there, and you're done. One other thing to mention is uh, if you'd like to move a group of markers at a time, just select the first one, hold down shift, select the last one. You now have a group handle down here at the bottom, and you can grab this whole group like so and that's actually not a good example I want to find something let's see I'll do these three here select that select that there and you can see that these three are gonna move within the two on the outside there okay so you can move groups at a time as well you can also grab either end and stretch these in an accordion type fashion. Okay. And as you can see, I've been doing all these adjustments, and the calc is doing some work there. So uh, let's see. One other item if you select a slice. You can hold down control and right or left arrow, and it's going to move. It's going to move that uh, slice marker by whatever the snap value is. If you hold down control and shift, it's going to move it by beat. You can also uh, decouple slice markers by holding down control. You can then move that freely. Now, if I turn my snap on up here, it's been off the whole time. These are going to jump. 
to whatever your snap value is. So if you want fine control, you're going to need to uh, deselect snap or, or press S. And then you once again have more precise control of that slice marker. And moving on to some of the last few things here, um, you can select a couple of uh, slice markers, right click and choose split at slices, and then you'll have a split there. And you could do anything like you could reverse that. I'm going to control Z. Uh, you could select even more. Split at slices. Now you've got multiple slices. And, you know, if you found a slice that you wanted to use as a small sample, you can go uh, right click on that and choose. You have several different options for bouncing down. I'm going to control Z and undo those. One other option is, uh, let's see, I'm going to escape out of there, zoom out a bit. Now I'll bring up the razor tool by pressing R and select a small area here. And the selection tool with Q, let's see what that sounds like. So say you found a little drum part in an audio clip that you're working with that you wanted to use um, as a rex loop. I'm going to get rid of those other items. Double click zoom out a bit you can see you've got you know your slice is already added you can right click bounce that clip to a rex loop it will bring up your browser and now you've got that rex loop here and your self-contained samples folder. And you can import that into a Dr. Octorex and uh, do some more manipulation with that audio, you know, and just experiment. So that is working with slices. I hope that I'm not forgetting anything. Um, thanks for taking the time to watch. Hope you've gotten some good ideas here. Experiment with these. Uh, there's a lot that you can do. And look out for more videos in the future. Subscribe if you'd like. I'm going to be putting up tons of videos. So uh, take care.